Okay, guys, this is going to be a video on the YL80C display for uh, electric bike settings. A lot of people are having issues with their uh, electric bikes. They don't have the right settings. They don't have the default settings. These manufacturers that make these bikes are basically middlemen like me or you that decided to have a bike company and just buy from manufacturers overseas, have them sent to them or directly to people that they buy the bikes from. And they just basically jack up the price. You know, so say if they bought this G-Force bike for, I'm just making a guess. I'm just trying to give you an example. Um, I don't know, $600. Or $400, more like $400, $300, because if they buy a whole bunch of them, they get a real cheap deal. Then they jack the price up to $1,200, $1,300, $1,000, just like the company Electric, L-E-C-T-R-I-C, who's based out of Arizona, um, which is one of the most popular bike companies in America. Um, they're not American-made. They're just middlemen. So these guys buy these bikes... And then the phone number that you actually get is usually someone's personal phone number. Like, I have my own bike company. I bought bikes. Made my own website. They send the bikes to me or whatever. And I resend them out to people. Give them my phone number for customer support. That's why a lot of these companies, the customer support sucks. The electric bike company did the same thing. And their support company is unbelievable because... That's all they do. They just have a place in Arizona that's the middleman hub. And they have now they had to hire people because there's so many bikes being sold for just customer support. And that's fine. Bikes made in China are not bad. Um, matter of fact, I think people in China, and I'm probably getting a lot of crap for this, they seem to be harder workers. They work longer hours. They sacrifice more. It's no way to live. That's why it's great to live in America. But because of that, and they also work for cheap labor. And uh, they have to send stuff over to America. And then America gives them a duty rate. And America charges other countries extra money for selling stuff in America. So it does make America a lot of money in the long run, the government, by the tariff book. Um, and I used to work... In, uh, in custom, so I kind of understand about all that stuff. Anyways, enough of the babbling. That's basically how electric, electric bike works, and that's why we run into these problems with these bikes, because it's so hard to find out what the original settings are for your display. Every display is different. Every company just has a different display. This is, I, th I think I said the YL80C. And so GeForce basically gives you a manual with only the basic settings of this display because they don't want you to go in and screw up other settings that will make your bike inoperable. So everybody's like, I want to know more settings. No, you don't because if you screw up the settings, your bike doesn't work, you, you bitch and complain to GeForce and other bike companies saying, my bike doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it's because you screw with the settings and you shouldn't have. Um, you only should be doing basic settings like the tire setting, resetting the odometer. Uh, the tire setting is so you use, you want to calibrate your display for your miles and your speed, miles and speed. Your tire has to be the right size. You got to kind of mess with it. You basically use like Samsung Health app, which is fantastic. My favorite app of Apple and anything for exercise. Um, so if you've got a Samsung phone, use that app, get used to it. It does everything you can imagine for exercise and fitness. Um, but you can just download a speedometer app and put your phone right here and test the phone speedometer to your speedometer and see how close they are in the miles. And if usually they have these set way too high, you're not going 33 miles an hour, you're usually going like 25 to 28. They got the tire size too big. You want to bring the tire size down to if it's 24 inches. These are 20-inch tires, but they have it. This one's has set to 23, which is kind of close, but it seems like 22 is better to give you a more accurate speedometer reading. But then the miles are off, so that's that reading. And then you have 
to unlock your class two bike to a class three bike setting. Then you have the, again, the trip, the trip uh, setting to put it to zero. Um, there's a few other settings that they give you. Um, the PAS levels, which is great about the G-Force. Um, you could change up, you have up to nine PAS levels and you could change the power in each. So to match your, your brakes, I mean, your, your speed of your, uh, how fast you're going on your seven speeds. Whereas the electric bikes, L-E-C-T-R-I, electric bikes with the L, those ones you can only change, you can't change the power for each PAS level, which is bizarre. I don't know why they don't allow you to do that, um, to precious, preciously match your rotation. Um, so anyways, let's get into it. So I have the manual here. You can see this. This is the user manual. And this is the real manual for the actual, this display. Not the one from GeForce. So we're going to go through the settings and what they do, and I'm going to read it to you. Um, so you can put your, your settings back to default, just in case. Oh, all right, so to start off, um, this is a 36 to 48 volt display rated at a current up uh, 15 milliamps maximum working current is 30 milliamps um, leakage current I don't know if you need to know that working current working temperature 20 to 60 Celsius covers a wide range blah 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 I'll tell you how to install it and here's obviously you must know how to use this by now just hit pause take a screenshot this is tells you how everything works yeah it's another thing you have to you have to set too you can set from kilometers to miles per hour that's another thing they give you um, if you hit this button up here on the little tab um, right here you can turn the PAS levels up down then the button on the top Tells changes to miles. I went 72 miles. How many miles per hour you went, the max, the average, and your AH of your battery, how much you're using. And the trip, 8.2 miles. And up here is the battery indicator based on the voltage. A lot of people like to see the voltage of their batteries, but you can change this too, the voltage of the battery indicators. But that's set pretty good, so you'll leave that alone. Okay, so... To turn on your lights, um, you really can't see this too. I'll put the light on really quick. So to turn on your lights, so this changes what I was just changing. The bottom one turns on your lights. You press this. Now my lights are on. GeForce also has brake lights too. So these, these are the up and downs and these are the two sides. You're going to need to use these to get through various menus in here. So, basically, to get into menus, what you want to do is, um, this is the, the button on the top is the information button, the one up here I was showing you. The bottom's the light button. All right, the power on and off button is obvious is right here. Just hold that. Um, okay, so they have a push mode on this. If you hold the minus button down and you don't let go, you'll see that little thing pop up there. See the little guy pop up? That is a push mode. It has a constant speed, I think, of six, six miles an hour. So if you have to walk your bike up a hill or something like that and you need to, you don't want to ride it, that's pretty cool. Um, okay, so to do the general settings, you want to press the plus and minus at the same time and don't let go. Like this. 
Now, the first one is your trip. If you want to reset your trip every time, I wish one thing good about the electric bike, L-E-C-T-R-I-C bike, whatever company, that their trip resets automatically. On this one, you have to do it manually every time. Something I don't like about this display. Um, so general settings, you're going to press the information button, the top button on the side, to go in to change the settings. So you hold the plus and minus for general settings. You press the top button, and you will see that you can do yes or no. Do you want to reset the miles? I do. Then you hit the trip information. I mean the uh, information button at the top again with your thumb. All set. Now you want to go to the next menu. So the next menu will be BL. This is the black light. So if you want the black light to be brighter or lower, I guess it's better for the battery. I like to keep it one down. One down's good. Keep it at level two for me, me personally. I don't know why that does that looks kind of blurry, doesn't it? The screen. I'm trying to make it a little bit better. All right, there we go. I think that's a little better. Um, so now you go out of that by hitting the uh, information button again. So the BL is done. Um, and then we go up again. This is the, um, let me see here. This is the metric system. I think. Yeah, so this is for imperial or metric. This is menu three. So one is for imperial, which is America. And two is for metric in another country. I leave it on one. So now we want to go to um, some more settings because that's all the ones for general. So to get into general settings, um, so we'll get out of this. Now we want to get into different settings. So I shut the power off, put the power back on. Now you want to hold the plus and minus again. Now you want to hold the, the minus button and the information button at the top. Okay, so information button up here, my finger and the minus button. At the same time, it'll give us different settings. All right. So here is the one I was telling you about the tire size. The default, I think, is 24. I set mine to 23, which seems to be the most accurate for the miles for the odometer, but it seems like it's still a little bit too fast with 23. I think 22, if you're looking for the correct speed for the comparing it to the GPS on your phone, 22 is probably the right setting. Um, but I leave it at 23 because I'm more concerned with the miles, and I always use my phone right here for the uh, on uh, Samsung Health app so I can um, track everything the miles and the um, miles per hour and the distance um, which is way more accurate with the phone all right so LD now LD is the, the tire size so obviously you hit the information button here, you pick the tire size, you can go all the way up to whatever you need. I pick 23. Like I said, the speed's off, but the miles are pretty accurate. Um, the LS is speed limit setting. This is important. This changes your bike from a class two to a class three. By default, they only have you set to 20 miles an hour. So, let me go back here. Um, so, you want to go... Say if you have a kid that has this bike, you don't want them to go too fast. And 
So you could bring this all the way down to, um, let me get back into the screen again. Sorry about that. Back in. So LS, I keep mine at 50, which is, uh, my, the spike goes about 30, 31 miles an hour, 32, 33. So you can go all the way down to kilometers per hour. Like, I think it's like, what, 10 miles an hour? So if you have a kid, you want him to ride your bike, you don't want him to go too fast, and you bought a bike like this for your kid, you can change the speed. So I leave mine at 50. Now we're going to go into, so I just went back to the main menu again. I think there's two ways you can get out of the menu. You hold the information button, don't let go. Or you hit the minus button and don't let go. They both work, kind of. So now we're going to in, go in this section here. This section is custom settings. So I'll read this to you. Custom settings, in order to meet the individual requirements for customers, meaning you need to, now this is the part that's important, the default settings for GeForce. If you have this, 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 this blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you have this display, um, for another bike, you have to match this display with custom settings for the power of your controller, which can be from anywhere from like 18 amps to 25 amps. The higher amps usually gives you more torque, more power. Um, this one is a 22 amp one. Um, they have some bikes with 25 amps. Um, you have to take this display and match it to the motor on the back of your bike. So the the back wheel, mine, this one from GeForce, I think it's a 750 watt, 1200 watt peak motor. Might be 12, might, I'm sorry, 750 watt, 12, 1000 watt peak motor. I think it might be 1200, specs change all the time. GeForce might have the 25 amp with the 1200 watt peak, peak motor now. And keep in mind, if you have a continuous power of over 750 watts, not peak, continuous, that's considered to be a scooter. Too much power in a lot of different states and federal regulations or state individual regulations. You have to get a permit and now it's like a motorbike. That's why they gotta keep these, these power levels down. If you get caught being on a bike trail and stuff like that or having a real powerful motor on these bikes going like 35 miles an hour, the police can pull you over, you can get a ticket, have your bike taken away. If you're on a trail going too fast, over 28 miles an hour, class three bike, it's not even allowed on bike paths anymore. It's not a bike, so I'll do a video on that too. Um, so now we're going to go into two custom settings. Like I said, talk to your manufacturer, find out what your um, basic settings are. I mean, your custom settings are for your motor and your controller if you replace the controller on the motor i think you might have to do this all over again um you can also do default settings which um you basically right now if i press the information button and then and the negative button it goes into default settings but you don't know what those default settings are at the factory it might not match your motor and your and your controller at all so don't do that unless you know your default settings to put them back in after you do that. Okay, so here's how to get into the default settings. So as we know so far, you hold the plus and minus buttons to get into general settings. Then you hold the minus button and the information button after you do that to get into more advanced settings. And then for custom settings, here's what you want to do. Hold the plus and minus button down like this you get to those settings. Now hold, the that's your uh, general settings. Now press the plus and minus button down again. Don't let go. Now we have the custom settings. And here we go. And they show you on the screen the direction of the settings. So you'll see here See the arrows, it tells you these are the general, I mean the custom settings. 
tells you how to get to them like I just showed you. All right, so let's get to it. This is your battery setting, the VOL. That means voltage. Um, so to get into it, you just press the information button. Now, this basically is telling you how you want the battery to show voltage for your particular battery. So, for instance, a fully charged battery is usually 54 volts for a 48 volt system. And they have it set to the settings as follow, the default settings. So if you have a problem, refer to this to put it back to factory settings. You could change it if you want to to match what makes you happy, but just leave it the way it is. Um, so you press the information button. Again, you have 44.5 for the second one. As you saw the one before, I think it was 40. And then you'll see it again. And this goes to 46.5, 47.5, and then 40, finally 49.0. That's what they consider max. So basically, if you notice, they have it set to, um, so basically, say if you're riding your bike and you say, hey, I still have a full battery. This is really cool. You know, you've been driving for like 10 miles and you've been using your pedal assist and you're not going very fast. You're on pedal assist one or two. Get your speeds at one or two or three, probably three. You're like, wow, this is great. You really don't have a full, ba full battery. It starts to drop. That bar will go away. That top bar will go away at 49 volts. But your battery fully charged is around 54. So your battery is going to drop from 54 to 49 volts. Then once 49 volts goes below 49 volts, that little battery signal will drop. Then you'll see it go away. So you really don't have a full battery when it says full battery. You could change this. You can make it so it's 54. Like if I do, I can go up, right? See, so watch. Now, if I, go, if I have this set to like 54 volts. So basically now, as soon as it goes below 54 volts, that little top battery thing will drop immediately. But we're gonna put it back to the way it was. 49, because that's fine. Okay. So getting out of there. Now we're gonna go to the next setting. Next setting is called Assist Level Section Interface. So, now this is pretty cool with this one. I know this one very well. This is what's great about the G-Force bike that you can't do with electric bikes. And I don't know why, and they should change it. I have my PAS level set from zero to nine. Zero means no PAS level, if you don't want to use it at all. Nine meaning the fastest speed. You could change the power to match your feet when you pedal, which is fantastic. Um, I find zero to nine works the best out of the box, but you could change these because I noticed with the original zero through three, like when you're in like speed three, the motor takes over and you're going way too fast. The motor's going too fast. You can't keep up with the motor. So this is a good level. So I'll hit the information button. They got it set to 25 for, for PAS1, 34 for 2, 43 for 3, 52 for 4, 61 for 5, 70 for 6. You can see it. Change them for you. And here's something that's very important. If you want to get the full max speed out of this bike, remember how, remember how I showed you to go to... Um, change it to 50 kilometers per hour, which I think is like, I don't know, over 30, 40 miles an hour. Um, you're not gonna get that until you go into your PAS level and your last PAS, whether it's PAS three, PAS zero to three, zero to five, zero to seven, or zero to nine, you gotta make it 
they only put the PAS level at 96% on all the PASs. So you're still not getting your full speed. You know? And also with this system, your thumb throttle on the left-hand side, which is much better than the, than the wrist one that makes you tired with electric bikes, your thumb throttle will go only as fast as your PAS level that you're on. So you get 100% speed on your throttle without pedaling. And same thing if you go back through them. So I'll hit this again. Um, so, okay, let's just do the typical one, okay? So you could change these. 1 to 7, 0 to 7. 1 to 5, 0 to 5. 1 to 3, 0 to 3. This is how it comes out in the box. So if you look at the PAS levels, right? They have it set to 40% power with PAS1. That's way too fast. Uh, 40%, you're going to be using your fastest gear to keep up with the motor. And then PAS2 is 70, which is fast. And then PS3 is 100. I changed this to 100. You got to put this on 100 to get your full speed. You got to change the kilometers per hour and the section I showed you. And you got to change this to 100 to get the full speed out of this bike. So, like I said, what's great is you can go any PAS levels you want. I like the uh, 0 through 9. And I'm probably going to change those too because it really matches the gears. And also, too, I'm making another video. I changed my gears in my uh, my back gears from 14 to 28 gears, zero, you know, uh, one through seven, to um, 11 through 32. The 11 means it's harder to pedal, but on this bike, when it comes to fault, on the fastest speed, like 25 miles an hour to, to 30 miles an hour. You got it on the fastest speed on your bike. You're, you're just you're just spinning your feet so fast to keep up with it. You can't keep up with it, and everybody's like, "Well, you don't want to go over 28 miles an hour." Now you're into the scooter zone, which sucks, um, and you have to get a permit and all that stuff. I don't want to go faster, per se. I want to be able to help the motor at a higher speed, like 28 miles an hour, from going someplace fast. Um, and let the motor last longer with my power so I can keep up with the motor. Right now, you can't. I mean, I think they did it on purpose. So I'll put a link in the description for that. You can buy, a, and I'll do a video on how to do it. You could buy the gears 11 through 32. Um, 11s to make you be able to keep up with the motor at the fastest speed. 32 is great for going up hills. It's even better than the original 28. So that's what that's about, to uh, keep up with the motor. That's a whole other thing I'll I'll do. All right, so we're going to go to the next menu. Get out of this. All right. Now, this is a very important setting. This is your current setting. You need to find out what current your controller is. Um, a lot of times you could see it on the motor, like on the back of my wheel, my motor hub. It starts with a 20-something, and it says 22, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, 750-watt motor. I think the 22 means 22 amps. You can also take apart your controller. I'll make a video about that, which is when you fold your bike in half, and you pull the battery out. The other half, you take some screws out, and you can pull the controller out, and you can look. And you can see how many amps your controller is. Mine is 22. This is a very important setting. You don't do this right, your bike probably won't run. So you press this, see how it says 22 volts? Mine's 22, so the default settings for the G-Force bikes as of right now is 22. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Don't make sure it's the right current. Menu four. This is called the Assistant Sensor Direction Setting Interface. All right, guys, I'm going to go into this a little bit more. There's, there's more information here in the, in the video about it. This is going to be a long video. I apologize. Okay, so, so run F means represents the forward direction 
Run B represents the backward direction. So you want it to go forward, not backwards. All right, so that's, keep it F. SCN2, this one, Um, SCN2 refers to the assistance setting, sensitivity setting. The setting range is two through nine. So this is the one where how quickly do you want the um, PAS level to kick in, like I was talking about. It says two through nine, where two is the maximum sensitivity and nine is the minimum. So right now, this is set at pretty much the most sensitivity. So when you hit that, when you hit that pedal to take off, it's going to pull you really quick. And I notice mine's pretty sensitive right now. Uh, it's fine for me. It like gives you a real good pull. I might change this too, because I want to be able to have a nice equal balance between the PAS levels and power. And when you take off with the torque, that's another thing too. This G force bike has 80 NM of torque. And it seems like it's even better than, than bikes that have 25 amp controllers. I don't know why. Theirs are like 75, but it, the bike takes off. I'm leaving mine at two, guys. Okay, this next setting is... Okay, guys, I made a mistake, so this is the edit. The, um, where it says N012. This is the steel magnet number setting for the assistant magnet, magnetic disc. It refers to the steel magnet number setting option for assistance magnetic disc. The setting is 5 through 9, 12, and 24. Press the plus and minus buttons to change it to what you need. Leave it alone. Don't touch. Now we're going to SP5. Okay, SP5. I made another mistake. Um, this is S called SPS, refers to the speed sensor setting option, which can be set according to the number of magnetic, magnetic heads installed on the wheels of your e-bike. Setting ranges 1 through 15. Um, waiting for my thing to change here. Give it a second. Waiting for my, uh, myself on the screen to change it. Still waiting. Come on, Joe, hurry up. Take your time. Hurry up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. There I go. So it ranges from 1 to 15. Um, right now, the default setting is 1. I guess I would leave it alone. Uh, I don't know what that does has to do with the motor and the manufacturer and all that stuff and leave it alone. <laughs> um, handlebar function setting. Handlebar refers to the handlebar function setting option and press the information, blah, blah, blah. Handlebar push assistance enable setting refers to the handlebar push assistance enable setting. H-N means that the push assistance function on the handlebar is enabled. HLY means that the same is disabled, which means by turning the handlebar, the push assistance mode will be on. So we, it's set to no. We don't want the push assistance handlebar setting, meaning if you turn the handlebars, it pushes. I don't know what the hell. We're going to leave that at the default setting of N. So I would leave that alone, guys. Okay, system. We're almost done. <laughs> um, system setting option. System refers to the system settings option. Press the information button for the parameter modification. Battery delay time setting. So... I would not touch this. The default is three. No reason to touch this. Leave it alone. But I'll give you information. 
It says DLY refers to the battery delay time setting option. There are three parameters available for the battery delay time. Three, six, and 12. Right now it's set on three by the default. Leave it alone. Um, for perimeter section, uh, you know how to plus and minus or information to accept. Don't touch it. I would leave it alone. This is called um, the battery delay time section. So we're not going to touch that. Leave it alone. Now I'm going to go through the settings again. Hang on. So you hit it again. You got the PUS section. Okay, I screwed up again. So I'm going to take over and edit. The PUS section, the PUS section, funny name, refers to um, button push assistance enable setting. Refers to the button push assistance enable setting interface. Y represents enable N represents disable. Press the plus and minus for parameter selection. Press the information button to confirm the parameter and return to the section interface for custom setting options. I didn't touch this. I don't know what it means and I'm not going to touch it. You could figure it out yourself. Use it your own discretion. Discretion. Hey guys, in the manual, the SSP, I don't know what it is. It's not showing me. Uh, I can't really show you, but it just shows the P, um, PSY or PUI, whatever it's called. Um, it's not showing what this is. So the default setting is four. Leave it alone at four. Now we're going to go to the PSD. This is password. I don't want to put a password in this because I don't know how it works. It's called um, let's go into it. It's called the password power on password input setting interface. Leave it at 0000, unless you want to put a password into it. No reason for this. PSD refers to the power on password. P2 represents the power on password setting. The default power on password is 1212. Press the button information to enter the power password and setting interface. So right now, if I want to activate this, I'd put in 1212. I don't want to do that. And you could change it too. It says to move the cursor after the four-digit password input, press the information button um, to confirm the perimeter. If the password is correct, the display will enter 8.1, 8.8.1, power on password, enable setting option. So you do the 1212 to get into the option to enable this feature it will stay the password input interface. So we're going to not change this, leaving it alone. I just held the information button until it went back to uh, the settings. All right, and that's it, guys. That is all the information. Um, for the password thing, if you guys want to read about it yourself, I am going to put this right in front of the screen for you. So you can read it, and if you want to do something with it, go right ahead. I don't. So... Starting here, you can take screenshots if you like. So I'll hold that right there for you. The bike calm down for a second. You can read that. I'm gonna go slow. If you want to put a password in your 
G-Force bike for this display. I'm not going to read all this and I'm not going to change my password. There's no reason to. Okay, so there's one more they talk about, and this would be the default settings. I talked about that in the beginning. The default settings is, so let me get out of this. So default settings is you go back to the main menu, you hit the minus button and the, and the information button. It says default settings, and I'll read this to you. Restore default settings. DEF refers to the setting option to, refer default, to, de, to restore default parameters. DEFY means that the default settings need to be restored. DEFN means that there's no need to restore default settings. In the normal display interface, press and hold the minus in the information button like I just showed you. The display will indicate DEF0 and automatically start and restore default settings. After registration is completed, it will automatically exit and return to normal display settings. So guys, so this is how you do it. You can do Y or no. Um, I don't know what default settings this will go to if I hit that button and go to default settings. Um, it could change all the settings and make your bike inoperable. But then you'd have to watch my video again and put them all back in the way I just showed you to make it work again. If that, might, that could be a last option if your bike doesn't work. Go to default settings, make everything go back to default, and then just go in one at a time and put the default settings for this particular G-Force bike. Or if you're building a bike using this display, you're gonna find out the controller, amperage, the wattage of your motor, the peak wattage and all that stuff the magnetic thing, all that magnetic stuff we were talking about, the magnetic heads going forward, backwards. Don't know anything about that. You have to do more information about that. So anyways, if sorry for this being a long and ridiculous video. <laughs> I had a friend of mine that wanted me to make a video like this. I'm helping him out from the GeForce Facebook um, user group. So um, again, I apologize for the long-winded video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. If you dislike it, you can hit a dislike button. Um, so like and subscribe, that would be great. I appreciate it. And I hope I helped out people because that's why I'm doing this, just to help out fellow e-bike riders. Um, goodbye and God bless.